If you've ever been on a big SMP or even just a big single player world, you've probably seen or built some of these blue ice roads. Well, today I'm going to show you a intersection that allows you to be able to decide where you start and where you stop a lot more easily. By having one of these four-way intersections, you'll be able to drive along at maximum speed, and then when you need to turn, you will be able to stop immediately and turn. So if I want to head to our shopping district, I'm able to just keep to the right and I'm able to get off at the right exit. And see, now I've arrived at our shopping district. It's very simple to build these, too, if you've never seen one of these. All you have to do is put a block on top of a cactus, and it'll make it completely safe, except for your boats, which, with some hoppers, we'll be able to capture it, and there's my cherry boat. Now, what if you wanted to keep going and not stop at the intersection every time? Well, there's a way to do that, too. If I hang to the right, it's going to stop me on this side, just like it did before, but I can switch over to the left side, and if I hang on to the left side, it will put up a blocker so that I don't stop. You see that? It happened really quickly. I don't stop. I don't stop. Let's go back and take a look at it. So as you'll see here, there's only really two different components, and they're designed very carefully so that they can interlace with each other as they get closer together. All eight come together in a head right here. The secret is in having trip wires on one side and then on the other side. And you'll see that as we switch between the two, it'll actually hold up the correct one. Now, the reason why we use half slabs here is because if you were to use the full block, the full block would cause the boats to slow down, and we don't want that. We want them to be underneath, but we want them to pop up and stop it anyway. So this gives you the ability to have your cake you need it. Each side has one of these, which is really just a pulse extender. And when we light this signal up, it will stay lit for a little bit longer. So watch and it'll fade slowly. So let's say we've got a roadway like this. We've set up our intersection without anything fancy on it. First thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put the pistons where they're going to go. Piston here. Now I'll show you how to do one side. Now let's say we're coming from this way. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go across and we're going to go to the left. On the left side, we're going to want to have these pop up like this. And on the far side, we're going to want to have these pop up. Now count six blocks, one, two, three, four, five. And on the sixth block, we're gonna to wanna to have a block right here, and we're gonna put a trip wire on that. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. We're going the other direction. Just to make this simple, so what we'll do is we'll put a trip wire here, and then we'll come backwards a block on each side. I did this with some glass, but you'll need to reach there and reach there. And we'll put some string in between. Now first, let's do the go side. The go side's really easy. What we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap around like this. We're just gonna run some redstone dust over to here. So this will send a redstone signal downward, like that. And all we have to do is hook this up. That's the go, very, very simple. You can see that it already works when we're on this side. Obviously, you would wanna have something along the sides here so that you don't slip off the road but I'm just gonna be showing you the mechanics. So this already works. We want it to stay open a little bit longer though, so what we'll do is we will put some redstone dust, like so, and we'll put a pair of comparators. And this gives us that semi-instantaneous delay so that it stays open a bit longer. So now, it will stay up long as it needs to go. From the far side to over there, what we're going to need to do is run this down diagonally. So we're gonna have one, two, three, four, Five. And we need to make these not intertangle with each other because we're going to have one from here coming and running across. So what we're doing is we're ducking underneath where this one's going to be on this particular section. And we're going to power these target blocks from behind like this. We'll put some dust here and we're going to run down like so onto this surface. So go here, here, here. And then we'll come out and go two, three, four. And that will do it. And then all we have to do is do the same thing we did before, which is add a delay. And we're going to add a delay just by going like this with a pair of comparators. We're going to use two this time. And that will be the delay necessary for it to stop us when we're coming from this direction. And so now when we're pushing along this side, those will pop up. So let's say I get some nether brick slab. Now let's say I had this set up and was finished. I could set this up with a boat and I would come through and I'd be able to hold this side and it would stop me every time. And if we're coming in from the other side, we'll be going super fast sometimes. And what we can do is we'll hold it this side and it'll pop that one up. And that'll cause us to keep going. But sometimes we'll be going so fast that even that won't be enough. And so what you can do then is you can actually run this further along with the repeater and you can go one, two, three, 14, 15. 
and you can run this another signal just to keep it open even longer. And this will extend when we're going super, super fast, our ability for us to put up a tripwire and we can run it from this location. And so this will cause it to fire a little bit earlier. That way we never get stopped, even if we're going incredibly fast. Now there's one more block you need to add. Notice that it's pulling up all of them, which we don't want. There's a reason why, and it's because if you wire these up together, you'll notice as you're putting it together that it bleeds over and short circuits right here. So what you need to do is you need to make sure there's a block right here. Make sure your green doesn't touch your red right here. And we can't just pull this over because then it'll cut off on this side. So rather than having any kind of block like an observer or a repeater that would cause a delay as we fix it in there, we want to just have the dust running directly. And that will do it. Now when we come over to here, we will see that we'll stop when we're on this side and we'll go when we're on that side. As you can see, it's the same component four different times for each side. And they're designed so that they all fit together perfectly snugly. And there's no issues. Um, you'll probably want to fill this in, obviously, with your block of choice. I happen to find it really elegant. It's one of my favorite builds that I've done. The final tip is that when you are building your blue ice roads, if you're not familiar, if you want to prevent all mob spawns, you can actually use buttons which have no hitboxes. And if you want to save on blue ice, if you've never built a blue ice road, and now's the time to start, build your blue ice road like this and you'll save a lot on blue ice. You're only using a quarter of the blue ice you would otherwise use. My favorite part of this setup is that I put up exit signs just like US interstate signs. And you can do that using warp fences by putting them on either side and then placing the other one like this, so. And then it floats in midair and you're able to actually place interstate signs for when you stop this intersection to know which way you want to go. Thanks to my patrons and I'll see you in the next one. Whoa, kind of trippy, isn't it?